through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 259. I'm Spencer, and once again, I'm joined by guest host, Ben Kendrick of Screen Rant. Um, Greg is still on vacation. Yeah, so uh, on this vacation, like, is he celebrating Memorial Day, like, the way that, like, is he honoring the veterans um, In the stuff, sense that he's, he's like, he's going on a hike, and he's watching Arrested Development, so uh, if you yeah. consider that honoring veterans, gotcha. then yes, yeah. yes. There's probably veterans in season four of Arrested Development. Um, yep. Yeah. Probably somewhere. Yeah, Jeffrey Tambor. As long as he like watches Battleship with the scene with all the veterans mm -hmm. like hanging on the mast yeah. or something. I went to I see um, like... Star Wars, Star Star Trek again today, and they had a little thing about like thanking veterans. I was like, I don't know if I just didn't see that the first time <laughs> around, or they cut that in for like Memorial Day or something. Oh, weird. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yes, M Night Shyamalan. Um, a guy who had a lot of buzz early in his career. He's kind of had a lot of flack later in his career. Yeah. Kind of an interesting guy to talk about. One thing that I will note that we are not going to talk about, though, is his first film, Wide Awake. Critically acclaimed. Yeah. Put him on the map. From the Wide director Awake. of The Village and The Sixth Sense, starring Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah. And Julia Stiles and Dennis Leary. In an unspecified role. Yeah. yeah. Uh, apparently about a kid whose grandfather dies and, you know, he's searching for God or something. You know, yeah. very much uh, a very different M. Night Shyamalan. So we're yeah. going to skip that. Google so a picture of that movie, though, the cover of that movie, and you you will find something very different than yes. the other. It might involve a nun, I'm just saying. And make sure you tweet Spencer to see what the twist of that movie yeah, was. Exactly. We're very curious. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, yeah, let us know because we're not going to watch it. Yeah. So uh, do, our, do our work for us. But we're yeah. going to start uh, at the point probably almost everybody became aware of M. Night Shyamalan. That was The Sixth Sense. This is the story of a psychologist played by Bruce Willis helping a young child played by was it um Hayden uh, Thomas oh yeah why are we uh, like, basing that uh, Haley Joel, Haley Joel Osment, Osment yes yeah. um, who's you know claims to see dead people uh, I guess we could we can dock the twist. I mean, this is a 14-year-old <laughs> right. film. I think we should say spoilers for most of the yes. Shyamalan movies. Exactly. We're and it, it, I would say for most of them, we're doing you a favor so you don't have to watch them. Yeah. But um, for this one, it's, it's a good one. I mean, it's 15 years old. Everyone knows it. It's been everywhere. Uh, Bruce Willis is dead. The whole time. The whole time. Yeah. And that's actually one of the things you have to talk about with this movie because that's one of the things that really was effectively done. This was before everyone knew M. Night Shyamalan for the twist. Right. So nobody really saw it coming. If you actually go back and rewatch the movie to see sort of the context of how you think like the conversations are structured, how we like you think he has conversations with Tony Collette, yeah. Haley Joseman's mother and stuff. It actually is just structured so it looks like they're having a conversation, yeah. but it's clearly and they're, they're like, not. Yeah, they're like monologuing kind of like, yeah, exactly, talking to yeah. themselves. Or yeah, something. it's sort of it's, it's sort of they are monologuing, but they're sort of like it feels like they're talking yeah. to each other, so it's very slick constructed and Haley Joel intriguing. Osment looks like scared of him the entire time yeah. too, like for a, a quite a big I mean I think I mean there's okay we got to mention a few other things um, Donnie Wahlberg as the kid who shoots him in the beginning like holy fuck who thought a new kid on yeah. the block could turn around that much like yeah. Marky Mark you've come far for the Wahlberg clan but Donnie Wahlberg like <laughs> he was like so emaciated and stuff yeah. like I, I didn't even know it was him until like I saw afterwards yeah. in the credits I was like holy cow so you gotta give a lot of credit there and you know it's kind of neat because it is a ghost story and it's kind of creepy, but at the same time, it's not a ghost story. So it's, it's really this sort of interesting drama. And for such a young kid, you got to give Haley Joel Osment credit. Like, he was a great actor yeah. back in the day. That promise seems to have sort of puttered Dwindled off. Over time, or he yeah. just, I maybe he just didn't care about acting as time went on. I mean, yeah. uh, he's not, definitely not as cute as he got older. He's a very <laughs> cute little kid. Yeah. Um, so you got to give it credit for that. And it was nominated for like six Academy Awards, which is amazing to think about, including Best Picture. Yeah. You think about just bursting onto the scene. Talk about No Better Way. Haley Joel Osment was nominated uh, in a supporting role. Tony Collette was nominated. M. Knight was nominated for Best Director. Was nominated for, he was nominated for Best Writing. It, I mean, it's a pretty phenomenal 
project when you think about how successful it was. Yeah. I mean, this was what, 99? So unfortunately, this is the same time as like American Beauty. Right. Not going to really beat that. But I mean, for a first, quote unquote, first time out, yeah. it's, it's a huge, huge project. I mean, made hundreds of millions of dollars. Everybody instantly became a huge success of it. I mean, definitely made Haley Joel Osment famous. Tony yeah. Collette got much bigger. It reinvigorated Bruce Willis's career. I mean, it was a hugely successful project, yeah. which, I mean, very much led right into the next project he did, which was yeah. Unbreakable. And I don't know, you know, thinking back on his entire career, Unbreakable might be my favorite one. I mean, because it's sort of an interesting... Um, it's a comic story in that yeah. sense. I mean, it's got a hero, it's got a villain. I mean, one's unbreakable. Like, if that isn't yeah. a comic hero, like, I don't well, know. Well, like, the villain and the hero are also kind of, I mean, they they juxtapose each mm-hmm. other, too, right? Mr. It's Glass like, is yeah, Mr. Samuel Glass. Jackson. Yeah. Once again, bringing back uh, Bruce Willis. You know, I, I mean, this one was a weird one because it, A, it was... I think it was popular, but not nearly as critically acclaimed yeah. as the previous one. I mean, it got nominated for no Academy Awards. Like, the stuff that was nominated were, were like, blockbuster awards and stuff like that. Yeah. It felt, I think it falls under the weight of, kind of, the expectations coming off of The Sixth Sense and people knowing that there was, like, he did a twist. There's a twist, and so he kind of, like... But I think it's also one of those stories, like, if I was to sit down and you didn't know who M. Night Shyamalan was, and I told you about this movie... Like, I could probably convince some people that it'd be cool, but it also sounds goofy as hell, too, in yeah. some ways. And I mean, you know? in some ways, it's kind of anticlimactic. Yeah. Because, like, the final confronta- confrontation really isn't one. Yeah. Like, it's like a- an argument, essentially. It's more a setup. Yeah. yeah like, it's. Yeah. And that's sort of one of the things that I, I mean, I'm unclear as to what actually transpired, but there was, like, speculation at one point. Shaman was saying that it was going to be a trilogy, yeah. which I've then sort of heard him. In retroactively say it wasn't going to be a trilogy yeah. and he wanted it as it was. I mean, if you look at it from the outside and you didn't hear any of that stuff, you would think it was sort of the beginning yeah. of a story because it's very much left at a point where it's like, okay, this is where the beginning of these... Right. Like, the entire thing is about Samuel Jackson's character, Elijah Price, a.k.a. Mr. Glass, searching for a hero... To oppose him, essentially. Yeah. So that he can be the villain. Yeah, yeah, so he can be a villain. So there's a purpose in his life. Yeah. And right when he finds him, it's like, peace out. Like, that's yeah. the end of the movie. And it's sort of like, wait, um, wait, what? Yeah. And, I mean, it's... I, I totally agree with you. If The Sixth Sense hadn't existed, it would be way more highly regarded. But the, the biggest mistake I think he did with this, and you can say what you think about this as well, but I think doing a twist... Doing like locking himself into being the guy who did a twist yeah. has sort of been a curse and burden on his career yeah. because everyone expects it, every film he does now, and everyone watches every film he does, yeah. waiting for there to be a twist. And they're almost always not as good as like the twist that we would think up or no. something. I yeah. mean, it's like I mean, almost every twist that he's ever done since the Six Senses, he's none of them have ever been as good as that. No. And like. I think you're. I think you're totally right. I mean, we'll be talk- we'll be talking about a few more of them, and some of them are pretty dumb too. Yeah, some of them I had a almost violent reaction yeah. to out of frustration. But I mean, this one, you know, at this point, I guess he's still only two movies in. You know, at this point, in terms of film, I can't I can't really think of any filmmakers who are really doing that. Like, I mean, the, I think it really got a lot of popularized or got very popular in Hollywood because of this and the usual suspects yeah. and the sixth sense. They sort of like the sixth sense and the usual suspects I should say. Um because they there were such like clever twists, everyone was like, oh my God, this is great. And everyone was like, oh shit, we should get a clever twist yeah. in our movie. And it was yeah. sort of like, who's the best at clever twists? Of course it's M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah. Let's just like yeah. have an M. Night Shyamalan twist every time. And that was what sort of became demanded of him. Yeah. Unfortunately I kind of feel like he got detached from like reality and what people perceive him right. as and he sort of got an inflated ego as his career went yeah. on uh and that kind of hurt him but you know in terms of unbreakable like you think this was like 13 years ago amazingly i mean bruce willis samuel jackson great together i mean let's think about their other stuff they'd worked on together um well not directly pulp fiction yeah um 
Maybe they did. I can't remember. They were Die Hard. Die Hard, Die Hard with a Vengeance yeah. as well. So, I mean, clearly some good yeah. chemistry between these dudes. And, I mean, you got other people like Robin Wright Penn and Spencer Treat. You talk about Haley Joel Osmond being creepy yeah. in Sixth Sense. Spencer Treat Clark. I found to be incredibly creepy in yeah. this one. Like when he has like, was it the gun or whatever? Yeah. And he's like, I'm going to shoot you. There's like, I, when I was at New York Comic Con a couple years ago, he showed like an alternate M. Night They were honoring M. Night Shyamalan, mm. I think, there. And everybody thought he was going to announce Unbreakable 2 at that point. Like that for some awesome. reason, I don't know like why, if there was just like a lot of rumors circulating and then he was being honored and everybody mm. was kind of like, so we're all on this panel. Kind of, the only reason I was there, I mean, it, was, it ended up being a pretty interesting panel, but the only reason I was there was right after Airbender. So there was like uh, very yeah. anti. So everybody kind of thought he was going to swing back and do something but they showed a like alternate take of that scene like i think which may be on the blu-ray or mm. like um, deleted scene yeah or something. and it's like riveting to like watch like kind of this longer version of it and like how it was going to play out a little bit differently and all of the, it's apparently like 90 percent of that scene was like improv even wow. with the kid and stuff that's crazy yeah so, I, mean, I mean he was he was yeah. really young at the time too like i mean i don't know how he's like Eight, ten, something like that. I was very young, yeah. and it's, it's so creepy though, because like he's like, "I believe you to be unbreakable. I'm gonna shoot you, Dad." And yeah. Sort of like, whoa, whoa this is yeah. fucked up on all sorts of levels. I think that's why like people had a difficult time with that movie, is because there's some like pretty. It takes like the superhero idea stuff, like it's very dark, really dark, and like it never probably like lives up to the promise that the movie sets out with, with like the train wreck and him being totally okay. Like that image. They were like they had plastic. Yeah, that they, the they kind of like, wreck that if like just hammering yeah. that home. Well, I think it would have been neater if they hadn't done that. Let me throw you one question though. Do you think, and this came out in 2000, do you think it would have been a bigger hit if this had come out, say, post X Men, post Spider Man, when sort of superheroes were becoming a more popular thing? And granted, it's not like a superhero in yeah. that same vein, but maybe. Do you think that, I mean, and this is, I mean, if I look quickly, like this is probably a film that made like 200 million. So we're still saying like this is yeah 250 million dollars yeah, worldwide. So, success, but like, yeah. I feel like it doesn't get as much credit as it yeah. should. And it, maybe that would do it. I, I think know. it's true. I mean, I think he was telling a superhero story before people were tired of superhero stories. Yeah, totally. we, talk, we talked on, I think, your podcast about the the Hulk, like a couple, mm, like a week yeah, ago with or Ang something. Lee. If Ang Lee had done yeah. that later, and like, it's sort of the similar thing. I think like now, if a movie like this came out, we'd be kind of like, oh, that's kind of refreshing. But you know, like we. I think at that point, people really, when they saw superhero movies, they wanted to see like cool CGI effects and they wanted to see familiar characters yeah, that Batman they were excited or something. to see. Yeah, you're totally right. And it, I mean, honestly, it's, it's sort of a shame they didn't announce Unbreakable 2 because I think that would probably be one of the best things he could do yeah. for his career because he needs, he needs to sort of do something. Yeah, he needs to get to something it. that people care about again that like has. And I'll talk about that later because I yes. said I have something to tell yes, you about. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm Shyamalan, looking forward so. to it. Sort of, I would say arguably one of the sort of breaking points for a lot of people. It's sort of a dividing <laughs> line, but it's sort of the last vestige of where people seem to be really... It's either really this one or the next one yes. for a lot of people. Yes. Yeah. Signs. This is the story, strangely, Bruce Willis is out, brought yeah. Mel Gibson in, and it's about a family on a farm who believe that they see signs ah, um. ah, 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 that aliens are either present or coming and sort of they begin to anticipate their arrival. Right. Especially, like, the younger kids who seem yeah. to be very cognizant of it. And the father, who is a... I think is he... Um, I forget if he has some sort of religious background, but his wife had died right. previously. And this really gets into the point where M. Night Shyamalan really starts to get involved with this film. So, you know, before this, he had done small cameos, you know, Doctor and Unbreakable yeah. oh, and God, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, I forgot about that. But this was the first one where he's like, he killed the wife. Like, he's in the car that ran into the wife who was, like, crushed in a tree and it was sort of like... And then shows up later again yeah. for, like, what is supposed to be the most emotional moment, right. basically, of the entire movie. <laughs> like, so you have Mel Gibson, like, talking to a guy that basically doesn't know how to act yeah. for the emotional climax of the there's, movie. there's a lot of interesting sort of angles going on here number yeah. one um this is really towards the end of mel gibson's popularity right. like he really began to sort of go into crazy town yeah. uh after this film you know doing like the passion of the christ and then becoming apparently very anti-semitic and possibly <laughs> racist um amongst other things yeah but you know this was still when he was a pretty likable dude i mean he he definitely was 
a popular choice for someone like if you're not going to do Bruce Willis, well, Mo Gibson's probably a pretty right. likable to get. Uh, also, this is sort of during the rise of Joaquin Phoenix. I mean, he was starting to get quite popular during this time. The yeah. rise of Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah. I see what you did. There. Yeah, yeah. I wish I could say that was planned. <laughs> yeah. That was unintentional. There's my brain working for me yeah. though. <laughs> but you also have like you know Abigail Breslin was breaking yeah. out during this. I can't. Im can you remember? Like, nobody thinks of this. Like, you think Loma yeah, Sunshine no. or something like that, but nobody yeah. thinks, oh, yeah, she was back in Signs. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. And this is, again, what's a, another twist ending that I think, besides M. Night Shyamalan's presence driving people nuts, the twist ending of this was possibly the most, like, choreographed twist ending maybe he's ever done. And it's pretty stupid. It's too. dumb. Like, yeah. like... The whole swing away thing, the aliens yeah. being... Like, the only other one I can think of that is in the same sort of category was War of the Worlds. Uh, yeah. When, like, the aliens just got sick and died. Where yeah. I, was just, I, I, was, I just couldn't wrap my... I was, at yeah. that point, I was, what the fuck? And this is the same sort of thing. It's sort of like, you come to a water that's, what, 70%? Yeah. Or a planet that's 70% water. Humans are, like, 86% water, and your one weakness is water? <laughs> Like, yeah. you're a smart enough race that you can travel across the galaxy, but you can't figure this out. Yeah. It's... Like, it's, it would be, like, a hazard everywhere, right? Yeah. Because, like, I mean, it rains in it this It rains world. all the time, yeah. <laughs> and like, that just, like, sometimes spontaneously happens. Yeah. Like, you know, it's not like... It's not like like they were invading even the desert, either. It's like they were, like, around water in this, like... Th yeah, it's... I'm not entirely sure I understand what the point of the signs were. Yeah. Like, that, isn't that kind of giving away that you're coming? It's, like, wouldn't you want the surprise? I, like, I will say that this has one of my favorite sort of scary moments of all this stuff. When they're watching the videotape and that alien walks across the oh, alleyway yeah, yeah, yeah. and then it steps back and it, like, looks towards the camera. Like, that is a great moment. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff that if you'd kept it in that realm for the yeah. aliens, it would have been awesome. But as soon as, like, they're sticking their hands under the door and yeah. they cut off the fingers, it just becomes cheesy. Yeah. The ending just ruined this movie. It becomes just, like, totally cliche, wrapped with, like, this just, like, completely... Like this premise is you cannot suspend disbelief for. No. It's just not. It's it's unfortunate because it's another one of these where like the marketing of the movie was like fascinating to watch because mm -hmm. oh, it was totally. the signs and like you were seeing all the crop circles and you were like M Night Shyamalan and well, that's when his name still sort of had like credibility. Yeah, and, like, I mean, I guess we can talk about that now since I don't think we talked about it with the last two, and I don't know if it was that way for the last two. Yeah, I don't think it was that way for the last two. Um, this was the first one that I can tell was marketed as an M Night Shyamalan film. Yeah. Which, I mean, you think about directors and stuff, maybe a Quentin Tarantino film. Yeah. But for the most part, most directors don't do that, regardless of Steven Spielberg. I mean, does it says Steven Spielberg film, but like, yeah. does he? I don't think, I don't think most directors market themselves above the title yeah. for a lot of movies. And this, it, it just sort of speaks to the ego that M. Night was developing at this point. That is true. I mean, a lot of, a lot of them are. They'll promote a movie and it's like, you know, a Michael Bay film or something. But you're right, it is usually below, like, on a, if you're talking about a movie poster, it's usually, this is the movie, here are the stars, this is the movie, Yeah. here's me, or something. It's very rarely even like, still, me. Yeah, like, the thing that's amazing is that he continues to do this even after he's getting <laughs> massive flack for it. Like, I'm, I'm, I want to look and see if After Earth quickly uh, has that on the poster. I, I, I don't remember if it does, but I feel like they do in the trailer. I'm going to bet that it doesn't. Uh, yep, nope, it doesn't. You're right. That's going to lead into my story. Okay. There. But is it, I, I feel like in the trailer, they definitely yeah. promote it being an M. Night yeah. Shyamalan. So it's, it's sort of very, very interesting. But as you mentioned, the trailer for that, for Signs, was great because it was very much a showing like crop circles around yeah. the world. And it's Building sort of a mystery. It's sort of like, do you remember, was it Battle of Los Angeles? Where yeah. they're same sort of doing things like South Africa, 1989, yeah. blah, 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 where sort of building up these yeah. alien things until they finally attack. Right. It was the same sort of thing with that. It was sort of like uh, London, England, 1990, stuff yeah. like that. And it was great because it didn't show the film. Yeah. It didn't show the film, but it built up a level of suspense, sort of same as like Cloverfield or yeah. something of that ilk, too. Yeah. You know? So it, it had a great build up to it, but yeah, it really. It really, I wouldn't say I disliked it. Like, it was disappointing, but I didn't hate it. Yeah. That didn't begin for me until the next one, The Village. The Village, I don't know how to describe it. It's the story of a small village that is terrorized by creatures yeah. uh, on the outskirts that if they don't 
pay vigilant attention to it and sort of obey a certain set of guidelines, yeah. they all start being attacked and killed. Um, yeah, they have like a truce with the creatures. Yes. I mean, that's like what they have they like this claim, truce yeah. with this. Yeah. And so they do, they have, they have a certain like areas they cannot go and also like tenants that they are, that they have to live by. Right. Or else like, they'll right. be unprotected. The creatures will rebel. And, you know, Joaquin Phoenix is back Looking as back, yeah. the lead or so you think. And then they change it halfway through, yeah. which I, I found to be very jarring. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, you've got a great cast. You mean Sigourney Weaver, William Hurt, yep. Adrian Brody. This is, like, post, like, you know, Academy Awards, Adrian Brody. Too. Yeah, and post Lost in Space, William Hurt, I think. If I'm... I think it wasn't Lost in Space, like, 1996 <laughs> or something, though. It was, it was a little bit past there. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, this also marked the sort of, like, breakout of Bryce Dallas Howard, right. Ron Howard's daughter, for those right. who aren't. Uh, cognizant of the name, who plays a sort of blind girl who is one of the bravest of all, despite being blind. And sort of when yeah. Joaquin Phoenix gets hurt, she sets out to find medicine to save him, despite that being against yeah. the rules and regulations. Um, I found it very creepy. The first half of this movie sure. is very creepy. I like the creatures. I like this sort of sense of fear. I like that they're trapped in this location and she has to brave it to go out. Whatever, you know, that's cool. Here's where my problem lies with this, and sorry for those who spoil it, but I'm saving you trouble because it's really terrible. Spoilers. Uh, this isn't even really the end spoiler, too. My problem is they literally tell you, like, was it William Hurt, her dad, is like, oh, yeah, we just made up the creatures. That doesn't really exist. <laughs> and then five minutes later, maybe, one of them starts to come up and sort of follow her slash attack her. Yeah. It's a are you really expecting me to believe this? You just literally told me they don't exist. Of course it's freaking Adrian Brody. Yeah. Like, nobody's going to be fooled that it's not Adrian Brody. It's, yeah. You told me they don't exist. Why am I going to... Yeah, you're so, like, who is the one person in this movie that is crazy and out of his mind enough to actually be like... But it's not, it's not even just that. It's sort of like, you fucking told me you faked this. Like, <laughs> you told me you were the one faking it. And yeah. suddenly I'm supposed to be like, oh, it was just a total coincidence that the exact creature you told me was fake is now real? Yeah. Like, come on, give me a break. Yeah. And then the ending was the dumbest of all, that they're just in a park. Yeah, they're in a conservatory because it, all the people that had, found, like, found this, founded this, like, conservatory had all had some form of violence of Yeah, the, like, the, when they ventured into the real world, yeah. back when it was, like, a real village, it, it, they had injury or death or whatever right. fall them, so they wanted to protect themselves from the yeah, real world. Yeah, it was world. like they had a wife that was killed. If anybody's seen Arrow, the TBC's Arrow, yeah. it's very, basically, like, the other plan that the bad guys in Arrow would have or something. It's like a whole bunch of rich people that like had bad things happen to them that just retreat into It's just a like, I remember watching this in the theater and literally by the end I was just like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Like, I, I think I've asked for my money back at a handful <laughs> of movies in my entire life. Maybe two or three. Yeah. Honestly. And this was one I didn't, I didn't ask it for it back, but I was sitting there like until the end being like, you fucked me, M. Night. Like, you seriously <laughs> fucked me on this one. Like, So I, this is the one that knocked you off the M. Night. Oh, right? totally, yeah. And yet, I continue to come back. Right. Like, it's... Like, I kept getting sucker punched repeatedly. I mean, I, I gotta take all the blame on that, because this was the expression, like, um, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me, or whatever yeah. that expression is. You're yeah. not gonna... Then, well, then you say, you're not gonna fool me again, or whatever, right? Uh, Wasn't that what George Bush said, or something? Yeah, like... Uh, it's, he, he's continued to fool me like nobody's business. But it's really the interesting thing about him, though, is he continues to, like, use the same people in a couple films and then move on to a yeah. new person and continue over someone else. So it's like Bruce Willis, Bruce Willis. Then he sort of switched up and went... Um, Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson, right. Joaquin Phoenix. But then he carried over Joaquin Phoenix, Phoenix here. Right. And then from here he carries over Bryce Dallas Howard to Lady in the Water. And Lady in the Water is I guess you would say this is sort of the one last mediocre M. Night Shyamalan movie. It's not good. I mean, Paul Giamatti is the lead. Right. He's a caretaker at a I don't know what uh, some sort of like apartment complex yeah. or something of that sort. And he suddenly discovers this woman from the pool that he maintains and he sort of 
forced to protect her from creatures that want to kill her because, you know, they can smell right. her or whatever. Um, once again, going back to the creature card, yeah. one movie after doing it with Bryce Dallas Howard <laughs> in the village. Okay, we'll leave that as is. Like, the best, he was like, he must have thought the best part of the village was Bryce Dallas Howard having to deal with creatures, and he was must like, have been. I'm going to do that again, yeah. but instead of the woods, it's going to be with a pool. Yeah, the time. woods was the problem yeah. the last time. I'm going to take what I did last time, I'm going to put it in a modern setting, surefire hit. He back saw, on $250 million track. Yeah, he saw like Waterworld or something, and was like I gotta do something with water. Yeah. So. And I mean, it's got a lot of great actors, and it's got Jeffrey Wright in it. It's got yeah. Bob Lababon. Uh, the problem, though, is uh, it's got Freddie Rodriguez from Six uh, Six Feet Under as well. <laughs> yeah. In one of the most peculiar roles I've ever seen. He. This is this is pre. What, what's that Grindhouse movie? Um, Project Terror. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pre Project Terror. Planet Terror. Planet Terror. Um, he plays a dude who just decides to work out one arm of his body. So one arm is like super built, <laughs> and the other's like just a regular dude's arm. And it's like, what a weird <laughs> thing to do. And this is, yeah, it's just a very peculiar one. And he must have thought that was genius when he was writing it. He was like, I've never seen a character with yeah. one arm bigger than the other. Yeah. It, it, well, the other problem is that <laughs> M. Night decides to be, like, a main character this time out. Right. He plays, uh, I believe it's a critic in the movie. Oh, that's right. And yeah, it's, no, he's not a critic. Is he a critic? No. He does that in one movie, though, uh, doesn't he? He's is a, he, in one? he is the hero in it, but the critic is played by Bob Lovelon, oh, right, who right. gets murdered right, promptly right. in the beginning of I the just movie. Remember, I remember that there was something with a, that there was a critic. Yeah. I forgot he didn't play the critic. No, but. no, no. He killed the critic. Right. That was just it. Like, funny how that occurs shortly after he's eviscerated oh, during the village. Um, not a subtle message there. I'm not... It'd be interesting to see if he fits a critic into After Earth after the dredging that he took for uh, Last Airbender. So. Uh, he didn't do it after the happening, so That's who true. knows? Yeah. Maybe at this point he's just like, fuck you all, I don't yeah. care anymore. <laughs> this doesn't work. Um, it, well, did you hear? I mean, that's the same sort of thing uh, Todd Phillips was saying yeah, about yeah, yeah. The Hangover two, 3. He was like, I'm just going to do the same fucking thing again say fuck critics. Yeah. I was like, mm, that seems like a bad idea, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm saying like I felt insulted as a critic because this right, was long right. before I was a film critic, so I didn't really care about that yeah. point. But it also was the sense that he made himself the hero for a good crux of the movie. It's sort of yeah. like really, this yeah. is the hero. Like M Night Shyamalan, you're the hero. You're saving the day of your own movie. Yeah, yeah. it's just, if that was not just the most egotistical possible concept yeah. of all. And granted, you know, it, it changes from that. But that's a good right. chunk of the movie is him right. as the hero. And it's just, it's so rich. I mean, it's, I kind of like, I, I forget how it began. I think it was a fable for his daughter or something right. like that was how this idea originated. And I kind of like the idea of a fable story. Right. And I like sort of this vulnerable Paul Giamatti who does it as well as anybody. Yeah. But... Oh my god, there's just so much ego in the movie. And again, you know, it just putters out to the end. And it's such a weird mishmash of like characters like Freddie Rodriguez that just sort of it becomes almost like a caricature yeah. by the end. So it's well, so, like really like disjointed, right? Yes. I and mean, that's like. Oh, totally. It's like if you're trying to. I don't know, and that's like the thing that like has become a major criticism of him is that his own his writing is like the worst part of his like he's his own worst enemy. You know, he well, wants to write and direct and act, and it's like, you know, if he's sort of focusing on one thing, maybe it would work. But let me give you a perspective of how this film was received, and I actually didn't look at the village, so we can go back there if we really <laughs> want to. Um, it won worst supporting actor at the Razzies, M Night Shyamalan. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, worst director at the Razzies, it won. Nominated for Worst Picture at the Rousey's. Sadly, it lost that. I don't know if that's a bigger, th a better thing or a worse thing. I wonder if, like, yeah, I wonder what was up that year, too. And I, believe me, I can look that up in just a second. But also was uh, nominated for Worst Screenplay at the Rousey's, which it lost. So he, like, yeah, so it took home two awards at the Rousey's. Took home two awards, but sadly not Worst so Picture. So, based on his nominations versus his wins, he should write. Okay. He should stick with writing, not directing, and not acting. Here, yeah, exactly. He, I mean... It's tough. Like I would, I, I used to think he was a good writer. I don't know at this point. At this point, he should just. Uh, 
I mean, did he he wrote he was involved with writing Devil? Yeah, he was. That was and decent. That's like actually a really yeah. good. That one's decent. When he started doing that, like the idea that he was going to have those like Night Chronicle movies where he sort of over he had like an idea right. and he'd throw it out to someone else. I was actually really excited about that because yeah. I think every single one of these movies that we're talking about really interesting ideas. Every yeah. single one of them, like Lady in the Water, could be a really cool movie. Totally, totally. Under, and it's got good actors. Cool. In it. Yeah, I mean, Signs could be really great, yeah. but it's like it needs someone else to kind of step in and like say okay this idea is cool but I mean we don't really need a dude with one arm bigger than the other in this no. movie right like no. that's kind of distracting it's, it's, I mean it, I mean it, it plays in the fairy tale aspect of it I guess but it's just it's so disjointed that it really yeah. it doesn't even matter at it's that point it's kind of like how Tim Burton is to me now mm. it's like you yeah. need someone to sort of step in like, oh totally some of these I've said that like. about um, uh, what's the name from Donnie Darko oh right yeah. um Fuck. I'll, yeah. I'll look it up in just a second. But let me get to this first. The two things that beat him out for worst picture and worst screenplay, Basic Instinct 2. <laughs> I can't, okay. I mean, I guess I can... But that just had to be because everybody was like such high expectations for Basic Instinct 2 I after Basic Instinct. I don't, right? I don't know how you could possibly... Uh, <laughs> possibly live up to... It's like <laughs> Iron Man 3. It's like, you know... Uh, even if it's even if it was amazing, people would still be like... I don't... Like, who has... It was a decade after Basic Who has any expectations at that point at all? Uh, Richard Kelly, director. Right. I think he's way better reined in. I think the director's cut versus the theatrical cut is one of the few times the theatrical cut's better than the director's cut. Yeah. Um... Quickly, let me go back to the village and see about Razzie Awards or anything. Um, yeah, I don't think I don't think it was. I, don't think, yeah, I can't imagine the village was like really yeah, on people's radar that no, way. Yeah. It wasn't, so he didn't even get nominated for a Razzie or anything. So I guess in some ways, like I think Lady in the Water was better than the village. Yeah. So it was probably some sort of like you know makeup for the right. problems of the village. But yeah, it's not great either. Don't get me right. wrong, it's not great either. So Lady in the Water is where I fell off. That was my point where I actually, like, I didn't see Lady in the Water. Yeah, like, I, can't, I don't blame so it's you. Like, that was kind of like, I think the village sort of, like, I just, I don't know. I don't know if it just kind of came out and I wasn't, like, really interested in the, I think I did like the trailers. I think I just kind of had felt burned by. It, I don't blame you. Like, I mean, honestly, like, I, I forget the circumstance. It might have been on video that I saw it. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure I didn't pay to go see it in a theater, but I was, I was watching it and I still had hope. This is during my period of like shame on me, right. <laughs> where sort of like every time like oh he, he had such talent in the beginning he's got to be bringing it back and yeah. sadly you're you're punched in the gut again. I think the, I liked the village more than you did, but I don't think I think I kind of have a feeling a similar feeling like you had with Lady in the Water, mm -hmm. where like you liked it more than the village, whereas I think I'm the other way. But but I because I I'm somewhat apologetic for the village even mm -hmm. though I don't. But I don't. I mean, it's yeah. by far not in my top three. Not apologizing list. that much yeah. for it. Yeah, I don't want anybody to go see it. Yeah. I'm just saying, like... It's not as bad as Spencer saying. Yeah. <laughs> well, arguing the village, relating the water, whatever have you. Sure. The point where I think everybody started to rail against him, though, was the happening. I, that's when everybody got back on board, I thought. Really? I think, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was the movie that I think not only were people <laughs> not on board with his him anymore but they outright were sort of laughing at him yeah. like i remember people laughing at that trailer when yeah. it was coming out and this is the story of you know um people just start dropping dead and in essence nature is turning on humans and starting right. to kill everyone again like really interesting ideas in it because like the suicides yes. i mean so like the, like nature compels people to commit suicide yeah, sort of and messes like, with chemist brain chemistry yeah or so they like, like they'll like walk off of a roof you know or they'll just like run their car into a tree right or, exactly you know, I think yeah. someone gets like chewed up by a lawnmower yeah, I think, yeah, or something yeah, yeah, like yeah. but like all that stuff i thought was that's pretty cool riveting yeah. but it's like punctuated like anything that like is in between those sequences is just the weirdest like drama mark Wahlberg's doing something super weird in it like i mean again this is sort of like you know a lot of the time i can be on board with some of his acting choices you know paul giamatti like Paul sure. Giamatti, don't play. Even even though I don't love her parts in Lady in the Water in the Village, I like Bryce Dallas Howard. I think yeah. she's fairly talented. You now Joaquin Phoenix, Mel Gibson, Bruce Willis, all very talented yeah. people. Mark Wahlberg, not saying he's untalented, yeah. but I wouldn't say he's as strong as some of these other people. Yeah. He's good in like he's great in The Departed. Like yeah. he's there's a lot of roles that Mark Wahlberg has been good in. That's a smaller in, part. Sure, he's better in smaller stints. Yeah. And, I mean he's gotten better as time goes yeah, on. So for sure, but he usually doesn't really flex that acting muscle, if right. you will. And Zoe Deschanel, 
Very cute, very charming. Yeah. Not necessarily the right project for Zoe Deschanel. Right. I mean, she's quirky, cute. Not really the right time for a quirky, cute actress. Yeah. Like, I don't think Zoe Deschanel when I'm like, heavy actress for this film. Yeah. And then, you know, John Leguizamo, if, if, <laughs> if right. you're thinking, like, high-quality actor, like, who doesn't think John Leguizamo? Yeah. Alan Ruck, like, very strange people. Of course, M. Night Shyamalan's back again. Right. It's It's... I, I mean, it was, this is the point, like, again, you know, nominated for Worst Picture at the Razzies, Worst Actor Mark Wahlberg, Worst Director, Worst Screenplay. And again, you know, this is, as I said, people are laughing at this, yeah. at the trailers. But, you know, it's, again, I, I, I don't know if it's sadder that he's losing Razzies or that he's winning Razzies. Right. Like, which, which is the worst thing? I would think losing Razzies, right? Yeah. Because it's like, then you're... You're you weren't bad, even you're bad not... enough to be like enough people didn't go see your movie yeah. or care enough to actually like vote at the worst or something. I gotta check out quickly what the what films beat. Oh, Max Payne. <laughs> okay, uh, worst... another Mark Wahlberg okay, joint. To be fair, this is a tough year for Razzies. Worst picture, a Love Guru. Oh, uh, that's a tough one right there. Like honestly, like I would not want to have to be... disaster movie. Meet the Spartans. <laughs> in the name of the king dungeon siege this is just a terrible year for film so like, basically Yui Bowl films a bunch of parodies and yeah that's pretty that's pretty terrible uh, and Mike Myers trying to figure out what to do after Austin Powers it's just like wow <laughs> I gotta love this Paris Hilton won worst actress for the hottie and the naughty and worst supporting <laughs> actress for Repo the genetic opera <laughs> that's an impressive feat but uh, worst screenplay love guru worst Ugh. Uh, Uwe yeah, Boll won good. career achievement, or I guess, what's the opposite of career achievement? <laughs> Worst career <laughs> achievement award? Yeah. I, Please go away award. Yeah, seriously. But it's sort of like, I, man, yeah, it's sort of sad that you can't even win the worst film of the year. Like, you're not that bad. It's, this one was terrible. Like, it was, the, the twist was really dumb. The, the, Opening was sort of a nice build, but everything thereafter was just sort of a steady yeah. decrease in Well, there's like a super weird scene with them in the field or something, mm. right? Like, I can't remember what it is, but it's like there's all kinds of GIFs and parody mashup yeah, oh, yeah. videos of oh, that yeah. scene. I can't remember exactly the dialogue, but it's just but, terrible. Like, like, the, like, it was the biggest, like, in the last decade, can you think of a more uh, used joke than that the trees? killed oh, them yeah. in this movie like that's gotta be one of the, like the top five yeah. laughed about things in film when it's like you want you want your antagonist especially in something like this to be something tangible right like you want it to have like a real presence and like in it's this movie tough. it's like it's an absence of yeah it's like, not it, well, it's not even like you know like the day after tomorrow where it's something like you can really see a lot yeah. of the time it's like air yeah yeah like, how do like you run worst. from air yeah I don't know. Yeah, it's like the camera was doing all these like camera chases and stuff yeah. to kind of show you where the air that would kill them was or something. But it's, but like, it's still like a weird... It's yeah. a nebulous idea, so yeah. it's, it was really, yeah, it was a really big letdown. Yeah. And strangely yeah. enough, if you think about it, if you look at all the ratings of his movies, that they've gotten worse every time so far. <laughs> like, literally, they've gotten worse every time. And remarkably, still the worst one is The Last Airbender. <laughs> like, can you believe that? Like, I mean, okay, look. Uh, did you watch Avatar: The Last Airbender? I've seen some. I've seen. I, like, I mean, I was yeah, I was I was skeptical about the show going yeah. in, but I enjoyed it once yeah. I got into it. Like, granted, I think they kind of dragged out the whole series a little bit much, yeah. but you know, it's still a very fun show. Yeah. Um, and I, I I'd seen that before I saw the movie, so I actually was familiar with it. And the big criticism with the movie going in was that they whitewashed the right. cast. They made everybody essentially into. All the heroes, white kids, and all the villains were brown. Right. And so that was clearly, that's clearly a problem, okay? Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Not even the problem that bothered me. <laughs> right. Like, the show fundamentally was a story about a kid known as the Avatar who had the powers of, was it fire, water, air, and earth? Right. Uh, it, he could control all these powers and he was going to use them for good to bring peace around the world right. against these fire lords who are trying to take it over. Right. Um, everyone else except the Avatar could only do one form of metal, water, air, or whatever bending. Right. And the show was very uh, fun. It was sort of very heartfelt. And they just sucked all of that out of the movie. Yeah. Like, it just it retained nothing 
of what made the show charming and fun. Yeah. Like, there's, like, no excuse for it either because it's it's one of these things where, you know, like, when you... Sometimes someone will defend, like, casting... I mean, not to dwell on this, like, racism casting point, but it's, like, you know, when you say, okay, well, like, you know, people are upset because Electra is black and, you know, right, the new sure. Spider-Man movie. It's, like, well, there are versions of that character that are black, so it's, like, you know, it's fine, but... But even outside of that, even if you sort of feel like Elektra should be a white guy, it's like you want the best actor in there. And so if Jamie Foxx was like the best actor to do it, then you can like switch sure. the race. But like the kids in this movie is not good actors. So you no. can't say, okay, like, well, you know, you know, we had all these actors, but when we, you know, tested them all in service of the best movie with the best performances, these are the best actors. It's like there's no way that's if, possible. If like, anything, I would say the non white kids are the best one. Like yeah, you have like sure. Dev Patel as Prince Zuko, yeah. who's sort of like one of the main antagonists. You have uh, Cliff Curtis as Fire Lord Ozen, yeah. um, Asif uh, Mandy V. Manvi. Yeah, um, I'll see Monty. Yeah. yeah, like you've got a lot of talented people as the non, um, the antagonists in the movie. Yeah, and why do you bring in all these shitty white actors? Yeah, like Noah Ringer who plays Ong. Right. Um, look, I don't want to like beat on a little kid, but like he just. He yeah. was not, he didn't capture what that character was. And maybe, I don't know, you want to blame M. Night Shyamalan yeah. for misdirecting. It totally it's, I mean, this clearly is, I mean, M. Night Shyamalan's uh, the Avatar The Last Airbender, which right. is so weird because he did not create the series. <laughs> like, it's based on existing material. I don't know how you could, like, even maybe they told him. Maybe they told him, they're like, yeah, you put your name on this version. Like, because <laughs> like, they don't want it. They were like, this is not the version. But it's funny, you know, I was showing you that this gets worse and worse with every film. This is. The viewers' ratings, not right. even the critics. Like critically, yeah. this is twenty. This yeah. is twenty percent from critics, forty-five percent from like yeah. general audiences. That is how dislike this movie is. And you know, it's not like the special effects in the movie are bad. Like yeah. it's got some interesting effects going yeah. on, and I didn't really need the three D aspect of it. You no. know, whatever. Um, but it has moments of interesting special effects, so that's not the problem. But it's sort of always boggles my mind this is sort of my theory about um why weird why it's weird that dc can't do good live action movies right. if you have like tons of existing source material just take one of your animated films that's good and make that a live action yeah. one like it already is there we know that's good right. there's three years worth of material for avatar yeah why are you just hacking together the shitty yeah the like, worst like the, yeah the worst possible like story based upon all this existing material yeah. that you could there's so much better that you could have done like i don't understand and it just felt it felt like m night Shyamalan was at a point in his career where he wasn't as successful anymore and he was still wanting to do big projects but they're like look we're not going to give you 150 million dollars to do some original project again yeah. we have this built-in prod property we'll give you 100 million dollars do with it what you want we figure, you know, between your name, there's still a little credibility, and this yeah. property has enough built-in audience that will make our money yeah. back. And the worst-case scenario happened, which was, like, nobody... M. Night Shyamalan fans and... Like, the remaining M. Night Shyamalan fans and Avatar fans both, like, turned on it. The problem, though, is, you know, the film was successful relatively. Right. I mean, it made 300-plus yeah. million dollars. And so it's sort of like... They got all those Avatar fans in who were excited for the series. They got those, like, last remaining M. Night fans right. in, hoping it'd be good. And then it's sort of like everyone came out like, what the fuck, you just stole my money. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it, if, if you can believe it, like, let's see, here we go again. Um, worst supporting actor winner, Jackson Rathbone. Worst director, M. Night Shyamalan. Worst eye gouging misuse of 3D, <laughs> worst screenplay winner, worst picture winner. He's just sweeping it all here. Jeez, and yeah. uh, losers here, worst supporting actor, Dev Patel. Ouch. I didn't think he was that bad. Yeah, I didn't think uh, was Worst bad. couple slash worst screen ensemble, worst prequel, remake, ripoff, or sequel, worst supporting actress. Jeez. Wow. They were dominating the Razzies this year. So it's clear that there's so much dislike for him. And as we said before, it's weird because, you know, Devil was a, kind of a fun film. I mean, yeah. granted, maybe it was that it was just sort of him as hands-off as possible. Right. But um, maybe he just, yeah, needs to come up with ideas and then hand it off to well, people. Well, it's like film is such a collaborative process. Like, I understand why some filmmakers want to, like, write, direct, and star and things like that, you know. But it's like you would think at some level, especially after this amount of criticism. I mean, this is not the first time he was being criticized for some of those things. Like, why you wouldn't at that point say... Okay, like I don't, I don't want to 
like make films that are frustrating to people anymore. Like I want to make movies that people care about again, and so like I'm gonna kind of like open that up. Well, I mean, he has done that with After Earth. I mean, like After Earth isn't like isn't his baby in the way that some of these other ones may have been. I, mean, I wonder though, like how detached he is from. I don't know. Maybe he just doesn't pay attention to the internet or right. stuff like that. Just because like it's so critical. I don't know how you could work if everyone's just railing against you all the time. like, And, I mean, maybe he just has become so insulated from when he was successful that he doesn't listen yeah. to any of that. I don't know. Like, it's it's an interesting question, which, I mean, brings us to this Friday, um, the, tw- the 31st. The most anticipated movie of the yes. summer. After, After Earth. Earth. M. Night Shyamalan's After Earth. Will Smith. Yeah, Jaden Smith. Jaden Smith. See, this is... Instantly where you're getting into sort of a weird thing. The concept of the film I like, you know, uh, the ship crashes on what used to be Earth a thousand years in the future. Earth has adapted because of the misuse of the planet. Right. Uh, Over years, you know, global warming, yada, 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 has turned it into sort of this uh, horrific landscape that's... Full of super creatures, Full of super dangerous creatures. And the ship crashes there, and, you know, they're forced to try and find this homing beacon that will bring someone there to help them survive or whatever. Uh, From what it appears in the trailer, it looks like Will Smith is injured, can't go out. And so his son, Jaden Smith, in real life son, and son on screen, Jaden Smith, is forced to go out and tackle all these adventures on his own. Yeah. Um, The good news is, is even if this movie's terrible, at least while Will Smith and Jaden were out promoting it, they went on the Graham Smith show or whatever and did that yes. like reunion with Yes, I heard Carlton about that. The uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air yeah. rap. If you guys haven't DJ, checked that out, yeah, go Google that. Yeah, it's DJ pretty... Jazzy Jeff was back. Yeah. Uh, Carlton, or Alfonso Ribeiro was yeah, doing the Carlton back. dance. And they like all rap and dance. And, yeah, that's yeah pretty that, awesome. that was pretty good. And, and then, the, the, you have Bradley Cooper and Heather Graham part. in the back. And Heather Graham is just like, she's like totally getting jiggy with it. And like Bradley, Bradley Cooper, Cooper just is like... Yeah, not in it all. As white as possible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right after he learned how to dance in Silver Linings Playbook, which too. is funny. Yeah, that's a, yeah. that is a shame. You know, yeah. he really should have break, broken out some of those moves. Yeah. I mean, let's let's start. Um, Will Smith, pro or con at this point? I, th- I mean, I think Will Smith still he has, he good. has failed. I mean, he has failed us in certain a lot of ways. For yes. the most part, like I mean, I would say Mostly most of positive. his movies are pretty enjoyable. Okay. He's still fun to watch. Yeah, so. he's, he's a very charming guy. This okay. is a darker role though for yes. him it looks like yes and I, but i'm not sure how much he's actually in the movie yeah, that's sort of my yeah, concern yeah. um here's the real question jaden smith yeah i mean what we've seen of jaden smith in the trailers is not discouraging but not encouraging i would say and i fucking hate the karate kid like yeah. I, everyone who's probably seen this already knows this i felt so insulted yeah. by the karate kid and it wasn't even like I, I mean i guess he was okay in the karate kid yeah he's not Un, completely unwatchable, right. but he's not that good. Yeah. Like it's it's not that he's so good that if you weren't Will Smith's son, yeah, like I could understand him being yeah. successful. Like I, I like clearly that's his end. Well, and that's the key thing. Like we should all have our fingers crossed that Jaden is going to be amazing in this movie because even if he's terrible, you are going to see him again. Like in a couple of years. years, I mean, like Will Smith is committed to making this kid like the his heir apparent, thing, yeah. and like so. I mean whether or not he's good so let's just hope he is good and uh here's an interesting thing to think about though will smith is the base of the story of the movie and m night Shyamalan, some other guy wrote the screenplay based upon that right so if the screenplay sucks do we give shit to m night Shyamalan or do we give shit to will smith i would like to think too that because will smith is like highly involved in this one he's he's producing too right mm-hmm, he's producing yeah. he's acting he's like i mean again now everything. we have another person who's doing everything yeah. but like in general, I think, especially because Jaden's in it also, like, there's so much riding on this movie for, like, their future that I would kind of think that if that there had to be a lot of kind of, like, pushback from Smith on things that he thought were stupid. So the question is, how many stupid things did Will Smith and M. Night Shyamalan agree on? And yes. I think that will tell us how dumb the movie is. But here's be. the question. Like, I like Will Smith. Very charming fellow. I think some of his judgment is very suspect. Sure. I mean, I'm not going insult, to insult Scientology, right? But it's kind of a weird thing, and he's very much into it. So, yeah. like, he has some peculiarities to himself, and it's not just M Night Shyamalan. So, I don't, I don't know. Spencer's opinion on Scientology is Spencer's own <laughs> yeah. opinion. Don't hold that. <laughs> they don't represent the MacGuffin, even. Yeah. <laughs> They're just Spencer's <laughs> yeah, opinion. That's right. The feelings expressed about Scientology do on not, this video cast do are not, not represent the MacGuffin. <laughs> yeah, the MacGuffin. Like, 
like, it's overall. Dude. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, you know, sure. No, he's I mean, got some interesting, yes, interesting aspects to him that I don't know what he like. I mean, wasn't there at one point he was considering being an old boy? Yeah. Like, if that doesn't yeah. speak to some questionable judgment, right. like, I don't know what it is. Like, I liked, actually, like, back when he was trying to win an Academy Award all the time. Yeah. Like, those were the days. Like, those were actually some sort yeah. of interest. Pursuit of Happiness. Do another one of those, Will Smith. Yeah. But, like, now... Even Seven Pounds or whatever. Yeah. Was it Seven Pounds? Seven Pounds, yeah. yeah. I liked that movie. It was, it was I know there are a lot of people didn't like yeah. that movie, but I actually liked it. But, that like, movie. it's like, what, what have you done for me lately, man? It just feels like he is on a track to, like, not try and be... Nearly what he used to be. I mean, Men in Black three, blah. Yeah. Um, I mean, just yeah, not not nearly as interesting stuff as he used to do. He's so. definitely kind of like focused on some franchise stuff lately, and that's the kind of stuff we have seen coming up from him too. I think, if I'm remembering yeah, correctly. Yeah. I mean, I think <laughs> they have an idea for like man or Man of Steel for Men in Black four too. I think they were talking about. I already that see like they have like him as a producer on After Earth two. Yeah. So. I guess they're already, it's already a foregone conclusion that they're gonna go ahead with that one. Um, <laughs> I just, oh man, I just, I'm, I, I wish I could say I'm enthusiastic about After yeah. Earth. I'm, I'm interested to see it. But okay, so here's the caveat to that. I'm interested to see it because it's gonna Holy be shit. free, and yes. like, I mean, because we're gonna be at a press screening. And I know that's like, that sounds terrible, but it's like I am interested to see it. But I don't know if I yeah. could like, if someone was coming to me now and saying, "Hey, what do you think? Do you think I should, you know?" get tickets for After Earth on Friday, I would probably say, like, definitely wait for the yeah. reviews, because... Well, let me let me go back and correct myself. Literally, the only thing he's done since Seven Pounds is Men in Black 3. Hmm. I, I yeah, don't know what you're up to, been? Will Smith, like... A lot of production. I guess, this, I mean, but sort of like Karate karate Kid and This Means War. Oh, see, I liked This Means War, though. It was good, but... That like, movie. I love that. But movie. it's sort of yeah, like, those great. are his only two, like, production yeah. credits since then, before After Earth. Maybe Seven the, pounds. Like what? Maybe it, Scientologist just like locked him in like know. a cryo yeah, freezer I don't know. for a little so, while. Until I don't know. Put him in the corner. Are you ready for my story? Please, yes. This, okay. So the other day at Screen Rant, we had we were we have like tag pages. So you know, if you go to the tag, there's like a poster sure. and you know it's synopsis and all that. And the poster that we had up for After Earth was dated. Like it was after they'd moved the. And so we got a we got an email from. Um, you know, from the studio saying like, hey, we need you guys to like update this thing mm. and, and, you know, whatever else. And, and we had like also tagged in a Screen Rant like Facebook page. Now you can tag, mm. you know, like we put up something on the Facebook, the Screen Rant Facebook page. We tag After Earth and it, it okay. shows up on the sure. After Earth, you know, timeline yeah, yeah. or whatever. So we had written, are you excited for the next movie by M. Night Shyamalan? Like, click here for new details on After Earth, uh -huh. and tagged After Earth. And so they were like, while you guys are at it, while you're fixing this poster, can you untag M. Night Shyamalan's name in that, like in that post or whatever? And they were like, because M. Night, and this this is like a direct quote, and I'm not gonna say who it was, that, right, like which, sure. you know, because this wasn't, it was I don't know if it was the studio, I think it was one of the marketing people, sure. that, but they said, M. Night Shyamalan is not part of our promotional campaign for this movie really? at this point. Interesting. I'm not, yeah. Like, and, you know, like I said, it's not like, that may not have been the main marketing people. It may not have been, you know, directly from the studio. I can't remember exactly who it was, but it was a PR firm that we worked with that was saying, like, Interesting. Like, they're, they're trying to market After Earth based on Jaden and Will and the post-apocalyptic, you know, action stuff. Not on him. I wonder. I wonder if that's like he doesn't feel connected to it, or if they just yeah. don't want him to be I'm, sold by it. I'm wondering. If, I think he's got a lot of, and it, you know, I know he's in the. I mean, we've like we were talking about it. I mean, it does say an M Light Shyamalan film in the trailer, and it is on the poster. Right. But I don't think they're wanting to sell it at least as the next film from M Night Shyamalan. <laughs> Interesting. Funny. So, yeah. yeah. Curious. We'll see. Um, yeah. Let us know your feedback if you're bold enough to check out this movie or if you're an M. Night apologist or hater. We'd like to hear about that. Yeah. But uh, let us know at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes. We're on Blip.tv, Miro, Roku. Check in on Get Clue. Uh, leave us some reviews on iTunes. And... Uh, Comment on YouTube. We like that too. We'll talk to you there. And uh, see you next time.